Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The praise and the thanks belongs to Allah, the Lord, cherisher and sustainer, guardian and evolver of all the systems of knowledge. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستخذه ونستغفره ونؤمن به وتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له عز وجل ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عباد الله يرحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل واللسان وايتاء القرب وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله اكبر اما بعد as to what follows the salutation that we traditionally give before this blessed day of Juma, before the blessed day of the, the Khutbah, is translated to say we seek refuge with Allah or God from Satan, the rejected enemy, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. We praise him and we magnify him and we beseech his aid and his guidance and we beg and pray for his forgiveness for our sins and errors. We believe in him, put our complete and devoted trust in him, never breaking or wavering from that trust. We seek refuge with Allah from the mischief of our own souls and the bad results of our misdeeds and our misconduct. Whomsoever Allah guides, there will be none that will misguide him or her. Whomsoever Allah allows to stray, there will be none that will guide him or right. We witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. He is one, alone, without partners or associates. La sharika la. He is the mighty and the majestic, and we witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger and the khatum min yubiyyan, the seal of all the prophets. May the prayers and peace be upon his noble and honorable servant until the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with the righteous companions, the descendants, and all of the righteous servants. O servants of Allah, may Allah be merciful to you. Truly Allah commands you to act with other, with justice, and to do good, to do ihsan to others, and to give to your relatives, and to prohibit indecency, a shy, and evil and wrongful transgression. He admonishes you that you may think and that you will take heed. You remember Allah and he will remember you. Call upon him and he will give a response to your call. And the remembrance of Allah is greater. Ameen. Alhamdulillah. It's a pleasure, an honor, a privilege to be here at Masjid al-Hadi. I want to thank our Imam. Brother Imam Shahid Abdullah for extending the invitation for me to join you. Um, I feel as though I'm at, I'm at home here, praise be to Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me in my thinking and to also guide the words that I will share with you this afternoon, inshallah, that he will accept them and that they will be reflective of the words in the Quran and that they will be reflective of the Sunnah in the uswa of Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that they will be words that inshallah will find a good place in our hearts and our minds. Today what I'd like to do is to um, address a subject that I think is relevant to the conditions that we exist today in terms of people's situation as they relate to themselves psychologically and emotionally and spiritually that we find that there are more and more people who find themselves despondent in various levels of despair, in various levels of disappointment. 
And so what I'd like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this afternoon is to guide me in understanding how we are to reject despair and we are to embrace hope. We are to reject despair and we are to embrace a sustaining hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in, in Quran, in Surah Al-Yusuf, in the 87th ayah, he says to us, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim wa la ta'isul min ruhi Allah innahu la yu'isu min ruhi Allahi ila al-qawmul kafirun Sadaqullah al-Radim, surely Allah the mighty speaks the truth. An English translation for this is to say, O oh my, never and never despair or never give up hope of Allah's Rahimullah. His, his, his Ruhillah is the soothing mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never despair or give up hope of Allah's soothing mercy. Truly the one who despairs of Allah's soothing mercy are those who are the kafirun, the ones who reject the faith. And it's important to just kind of look at this word that is used in this particular ayat. وَلَا تَعِسُوا مِنْ رُوحِ Ya'isa means to despair or to give up hope in something. Today, the world burdens us with all kinds of stresses. The world burdens us with all kinds of struggles. And we think sometimes that we are always desperate for this and that. The world builds all kinds of what we consider to be needs and appetites in us. And so we carry sometimes a heavy weight that can impact our perception of life, that can impact how we look at life and put sometimes some burden on us that we really should not be carrying. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when we meet these sometimes disappointing situations, and when we meet these situations that sometimes have a tendency to distort our vision and sometimes crush our desires and sometimes squash our expectations and sometimes disappoint us in terms of our aspirations, and we meet disappointment, Allah says, never despair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's soothing mercy. His soothing mercy, Ruhillah. And this, this word comes from the word Barah, which means that is a life giving or soothing mercy. And we as believers have to always understand that it is our faith that holds us up. When they look at the planets out in the, in the cosmos, right, they wonder what Allah says, what is holding them up? There's no pillars that are holding them up. It is, it is their iman, it is, it is their discipline and their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that holds them up. And the same thing applies to the human being. It is our discipline, it is our obedience, it is our faith that holds us up when we are meeting disappointment and difficulty. Praise be to Allah. قَدْ أَفْلَهَا مُؤْمِنُونَ قَدْ أَفْلَهَا مُؤْمِنُونَ قَدْ أَفْلَهَا مُؤْمِنُونَ The believers will be successful. The believers are promised to be successful. But we have to hold on to Allah's soothing mercy. And it's interesting that the word that is used for soothing mercy, right, Rahul, which has to do also with rihun, which is power, strength, victory, mercy, or also aid against an enemy. And sometimes our psychology can be our worst enemy. What we're thinking and how we're thinking and what is the influence in our life can be sometimes the worst enemy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an aid to combat those negative thoughts. It is interesting to note that the angels had a certain opinion about what Allah was creating when he was creating Adam, alayhi salam. He said that he was creating a khalifa in the earth, and the angels said, are you going to create something that's caused trouble? And bloodshed, right? They had a view of him already. They had already formulated something. But Allah says, wait until I have breathed into him of my ruh, something of my spirit. Wait until I have breathed something of him in my spirit, and then you make your judgment. 
This rule is the same thing. We have been given something of Allah's spirit, something of Allah's will that is in us. The only thing we have to do is have faith in that, even though sometimes we may be in the most despondent situation. Have faith that Allah's will, has faith that Allah's spirit, have faith that Allah is going to carry us through that difficulty. He repeats it. Verily, in the difficulty, there is relief. In the difficulty, there is relief. Because when we come through this difficulty, there is something, there's some fiber, there's some muscles, whether it be mental muscles or whether it be physical muscles, whether it be emotional muscles, there is some muscle that is being tested as a result of this difficulty. And when we come through that difficulty, that muscle is strengthened. Praise be to Allah. So Allah has given us life. He's given us spirit. He's given us the essence of an inspiration that will carry us, inshallah, to the destiny. Allah's soothing mercy, ruhillah. The life-giving spirit of the words that are contained within the Quran and how those words are to be applied in the human being's life, exemplified in the uswa and the sunnah of Muhammad, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> So what do we do when we face disappointment and loss? What do we do? Because we're going to face disappointment and loss. We're going to lose members of our family. We're going to lose beloved members of our families. We're going to be disappointed in our jobs. That promotion that you wanted is going to go to somebody else sometimes. That raise that you wanted is not going to be there that, that, you know, that you were counting on bringing home. Right? And somebody is going to disappoint you. Somebody that you perhaps had a lot of confidence in is going to disappoint me. They won't betray you. What makes us think that people are not going to betray us when the, when the Prophet Sallallahu had close people that betrayed him? Praise be to Allah. There is a surah that is important for us to be mindful of when we face these difficulties and sometimes we face these disappointments. It was revealed in Mecca during a time when Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu was facing difficulty and trial and he was almost thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had kind of abandoned him. He hadn't, he hadn't received revelation in almost six months, it says that, in the history. And he was under a certain kind of distress, understanding that he thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was displeased with him. Praise be to Allah. And this is Surah Al-Duha. It is, it is the surah that is the message is called by the scholars, it's called the message of hope and promise for the future. Surah to Duha is called the, the surah of hope and promise for the future. I'm going to say that again. It is the surah of hope and promise for the future. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us new light, new visibility, and new beginnings, even though sometimes we may have to go through some darkness. There is a new light that is emerging on the horizon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, wa-duha, wa-layli idha saja, ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala, wa la'l-akhiratu khayrul laka min al-ula, wa la'sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda, alam yajidika yateeman fa'awa, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ آئِلًا فَأَغْنَى وَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَخَهَرُ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرُ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَهَدِّي صدق الله رجيم Allah says by the glorious morning light and by the night as it is stretched out you know, sometimes we go through periods of darkness and it looks like it's never going to end. You know, it looks like that looks like it's like, like we at night all the time. So, but Allah says, by the glorious morning light, he's swearing by the fact that, okay, you're going through this period of, of darkness, you're going through this period of night that seems to be everlasting and stretching out, but have faith that the glorious morning light is there. Praise be to Allah. That your guardian Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased. That he is always near. He is always there. And that 
you have to expect that there's going to be cycles in our life where we're going to experience joy and we're going to experience sorrow. We're going to experience good and we're going to experience harm. There's going to be these things that are going to come into our life. So we have to be physically, psychologically, and spiritually prepared to understand that these are just the elements of nature. And Allah's soothing mercy is the preserver that brings us through the night because we have faith in the day. He sustains us and brings us out on the other side of our disappointment. And then he ascends us in character so that our perception is broadened. Sometimes you have to go through some difficulty in order for you to get a broader view of what life is really all about. Because sometimes we have this biopic view of life. Everything is happy-go-lucky, right? And so we go through some difficulty, and Allah is saying, okay, you know, there's a broader perception, there's a broader perception that you're supposed to have of life so that you can be prepared for sometimes the enemy that is lurking in the corners. Praise be to Allah. So Allah lightens the dark. He shines light sometimes where it's necessary for us to illuminate the paths of our life. And Allah says, and surely the life to come will be better for you than the prison. That the situation that we're in that may be disappointing and may be causing us some frustration, it's going to pass. It'll be, one, it'll be something that you will reflect on later on and you say, you thank Allah that you came through that. Praise be to Allah. You will be grateful for the experience because when you meet the test the next time, you know you have the fortitude, you know you have the ability, you know you have the capability of coming through it as long as you have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The beautiful thing about Ibrahim alayhi salam was the fact that Ibrahim was a servant that not only just believed in Allah, he believed Allah. And there's a difference. There's a difference between saying, I believe in Allah and believing Allah. <laughs> there are a whole lot of people who say they believe in Allah, but do they believe God? Praise be to Allah. And believing him means that you trust that, there is going to, that he is going to be there when you need him most. Praise be to Allah. Each soul seeks peace and goodness with God. And as long as we have faith, then we will meet a succeeding muscle that gives us more and more iman. Or iman gets strengthened. And the thing about iman is that sometimes it, it, it wavers, it moves back and forth, right? But it's just like anything else that is, that is part of your makeup. As long as you test it and as long as you utilize it, it gets stronger, praise be to Allah. And then Allah says, and soon will your guardian Lord give you that where well you will be well pleased. That the future of faith is one that will be pleasing to Allah and pleasing to your own soul. <clears throat> that you will find pleasure not only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you the relief that you require, but you will have pleasure in understanding that you have been given the strength to come through the next test. Praise be to Allah. Patiently persevering and seeking to please Allah means that you will find pleasure in your own soul. Did he not find you an orphan and give you care? Who are the orphans? We have to expand our understanding of who orphans are. Because orphans are not just people without parents. Orphans are also people without knowledge. Because parents are supposed to be the first teachers, am I right or wrong? If you don't have someone that basically is imparting knowledge to you, then you might be considered an orphan because you don't have anybody that is caring for you for the most precious thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And that is the intellect, the aqua. Muhammad the Prophet said, this is the most precious thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And if that is not being fed, if that's not being nurtured, then there is a condition that is almost like you are an orphan. Praise be to Allah. What else? People without the ability to have someone look after their interest and protect their future. Someone that basically is your advocate. Someone that is looking out not only for you, but looking out for your children. We can't always be mindful of where our children are, but if we have someone that is part of our community, 
is looking out for our family, then we know that our children are being protected. And if you don't have that, then you can consider yourself to be an orphan within the society because you don't have somebody protecting you in the social structure. Praise be to Allah. People that don't have someone to aid them, someone to hear them, someone to look out for their concerns, someone to hear their interests, someone to actually nurture and grow them, these are all considered to be social conditions that are orphanage in nature. When you don't have someone that is looking out for your social, spiritual, economic interests, then you are in fact left on your own. <laughs> and you're living an orphan life. And so, we have to be the people that provide the aid for people within a society that are often treated as orphans. We have to be the foster parents. And who better to be the foster parents than people of faith? People who can not only give them an aid and give them sometimes the, the physical um, nurturing that they need, but give them also the intellectual nurturing that they need. Give them the emotional nurturing that they need. Give them the psychological nurturing that they need. Give them the spiritual nurturing that they need. Someone has to provide that to those that don't have the parents to give that to them. And then Allah says, and he found you wandering and he gave you guidance. Huda, he gave you guidance. And many people, you know, they wander in different ways. They, under, they wander in a maze of error that has to do with perhaps even understanding who they are. Sometimes people wander through life because they never found out who they really are. They never really understood their personality because so many people have told them who they were supposed to be and they got conflicting messages so they're schizophrenic. <laughs> And that's the, you know, when you wonder, you wonder why people have multiple personalities, the reason why they have multiple personalities is because the society has confused them about thinking who they are. The greatest knowledge that you can have is the knowledge of yourself. Man arafa nessa arafa rabba. He who knows his own soul knows his Lord. <laughs> know yourself, and as a result of knowing yourself, then you become acquainted with your Rabb. You're nurturer. But you have to come through that maze of error of wondering about your feelings, wondering about your thoughts, wondering about your motives, wondering about your understanding about who it is that you should be giving your devotion to. And when you come to the recollection, when you come to the reconciliation, that your only devotion is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that automatically clears so much up for you. La ilaha illallah. Those words are some of the most powerful words that a human being can utter because it just clears up so much that confuses their life. Because this world tells you that everything and anything can be your God. <laughs> and he found you poor and in need and enriched you and made you independent. Every human being comes here in need. Every human being requires something that is going to lift them up and keep them up and keep them moving. But it is important to understand that our hearts, our heads, and our hands have to be open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our hearts, our heads, and our hands have to be open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reaching out and surrendering to Him, trusting Him as the merciful benefactor who will respond to our needs and bestow the gift of divine guidance on the one who is calling upon him. Call upon him, and he will give a response to your call. Praise be to Allah. And so then Allah says, and therefore treat not the orphan with harshness. The believer is the one who is empathetic. The believer is the one who has sensitivities. And the basharun mithrukum. I am a human being with sensitivities just like you. What was the prophet saying? He was, he was saying, yes, that I'm a man like you, but he's also saying that I have sensitivities like you. My feelings can get hurt just like your feelings can get hurt. I can be disappointed just like you can be disappointed. So he was, he was telling people that he was, he was not a divine being, he was a human being. And he was a, be, he was a being that had emotions and feelings just like the rest of us, 
But the one thing about him is the fact that he was mindful of these sensitivities, and so he treated human beings the way he himself wanted to be treated. How many of us can do that? That's where we grow, understanding that when you can treat your brother better than you treat yourself, then you really have graduated. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. You know that Hadith says, you know, to love for your brother what you love for yourself. Well, you know, some scholars say that when you carry that particular uh, statement to the graduation point, it means that you want more for your brother than you want for yourself. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Nor drive away the petitioner. Give anyone that has a complaint an opportunity to voice their complaint. But favor, but let the favor and the grace and the bounty and the blessings of Allah, the ni'mah of Allah, let that be the report of your life. Let that be the proclamation of your life. Let that be the hadith of your life. Let that be your story. Let Allah's blessing be your story. And you don't always have to broadcast that. People will see that you've been blessed just by virtue of your life. Sometimes people don't, you, sometimes you don't even have to tell people you're a Muslim. They can tell by the radius in your personality that you're a Muslim. Praise be to Allah. They will say that there's something different about you. <laughs> and because they see that you exude something that is natural, you exude something that is human, you exude something that is part of this rule that Allah has breathed into you, and it comes out as a result of the glowing personality that the human being is blessed with. This is the ni'mah, this is the favor, this is the grace, this is the bounty, this is the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have faith that Allah will bring a new order, a new day, and lift out the minds of those who are suffering in darkness, out of the shadows, out of human tragedy, out of sometimes the difficulty that they are in, into a new dawning, a bright new light that renews human sensitivities and also renews common sense in the human being. How do we grow this? By practicing more kindness, by practicing more empathy, by substituting empathy with harshness, by making sure that we remove harshness and we bring about empathy, by removing selfishness and bringing about generosity, by removing emotion and bringing about rational thought, by bringing trustworthiness instead of lies and deceit. How do we report and chronicle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's niqwa is make ourselves available in the public sphere. We have to be socially engaged. Muslims cannot just live within the confines of a masjid. Al-Islam is a message that has to be experienced and has to be taught out into the social atmosphere. It is a message that needs to be brought out into not only the schools, but into government, especially in government today. Yes, the United States may be perhaps one of the most, is the pros most prosperous country in the United States, but it is bankrupt on morality. <laughs> it is bankrupt on ethics. It is bankrupt on consciousness. It is bankrupt on social conscience. And so there has to be someone to restore that to the human being's mind and soul and the human society. We have to be engaged. We as Muslims have to be engaged in the reformation and transformation of the human society. Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu said that every, everyone starts his day as a vendor of their own soul, either freeing it or bringing it around its ruin. And the way you liberate your soul is by sharing some of yourself with others. You liberate your soul by sharing on your goodness with other people. The one thing that you can be sure of that is that your goodness will never run out. You will never outdo Allah in doing good. And when you give good, Allah is going to replenish that with more. Allah says, and if you are grateful, what? I will give you more. And if you are ungrateful, then my punishment is severe. The Quran is an argument for or against us. It either liberates our souls or it makes sure that we have some degree of consciousness that pricks our souls. Link to the Quran is an expression of life that begins to have our life 
flourish. It nourishes, it purifies, it protects our life. And as long as we have life, we have a mission. As, and when you wake up in the morning for Fajr Salat, or Tahajr Salat, when you wake up and, you, and, you, and Allah blesses you with breath, Allah has invested another hour, another moment. He has invested something in you that basically you have a responsibility to carry out. Every moment that Allah has given you another breath, then you have given another opportunity to do better. Praise be to Allah. Allah says, spend, O son of Adam, and I will spend on you. Allah says, spend, O son of Adam, and I shall spend on you. The more we spend of what we have, fi sabilillah, in the way of Allah, the more Allah will give us to spend. Praise be to Allah. And we will never run out. The seeds we sow today in terms of establishing al-Islam in the society in which we live, those seeds our children will reap tomorrow. We have to be like the planters of olive trees. The planters of olive trees plant seeds in the ground knowing that they will never taste of their fruit. But they know and they have faith that the generations that will come after them will be the ones to pluck the fruit, feed their children, and begin to harvest that fruit that they have planted. And there will be generations and generations that will come after that. You are the best of people, evolved and brought out for mankind. We're not just here for us, we're here for the human beings, all of human beings. We're examples evolved, how evolved? Evolved intellectually, evolved spiritually, evolved emotionally, evolved rationally. We have been evolved, we have, there's, a, there's a wholeness that Muslims have been given that is supposed to be shared with the emptiness that is in human society. You are supposed to fill the empty vessels with what Allah has given you. And then he says, you enjoin what is right, ma'aruf, universally accepted as right, ma'aruf is universally accepted as right, not just right for Muslims, not just right for Christians, not just right for Jews, but right for everybody. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. And you forbid what is, what is munkar. What is munkar? It's translated to say that which is wrong. But munkar really means that which sucks the life out of people. You hear what I said? Munkar is that which sucks the life. It's like the spider. The spider, it creates a web, and then that web is an attraction for its victim. The victim comes, gets trapped in the web, and then the spider comes down and sucks all the juices of life out of that victim. But he leaves what? He leaves a shell. Why does he leave the shell? Because the shell has the appearance of being alive, so it attracts the next victim. <laughs> and so this world is very much like that spider. It will suck the life out of human beings, and you will think, you will think because the human being is walking down the street that that human being's got life. And you may even follow that human being in his death walk. <laughs> but it is munkar. It has been, the life has been extracted from that human being. And he is just a victim. He is just a victim calling on another victim. Right? He is a victim that is calling for another victim. And the spider of the world is there to suck the life out of the next victim. This is munkar. We are to prohibit, we are to fight against the munkar. And then he goes on to say, and you believe in Allah. Yes, we believe in Allah, but you also must believe Allah. You must trust Allah. You must trust that Allah's promise is true, that it is haq, that it is real. And though sometimes you go through difficulty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's truth will manifest itself eventually with patience and perseverance. He said, and if only the people of the book had faith, it would be best for them. Among them are some who have faith, but most of them are perverted transgressors. And we see this today. The society today is facing the perversion 
that it has allowed to happen for too long. And we find that the people who are supposed to be the models, the role models, the people who are supposed to be the leaders in our country are the ones that are the most perverted in their transgression. Y'all hear what I said? It's, it, is, it is the people who are supposed to be the models of excellence that are now being uncovered to be the ones that have perverted the society so much that you can't, you can't even find good leadership. And the country now is looking for good leadership, which I might say we have to be the ones to fill that void. So I say to you, dear believers, that the opportunity for the Muslim to fill the void of leadership, righteousness, of rational thinking, of sympathy and empathy that is desperately needed by the society today, that void is waiting for you and I to be filled. That it's just waiting for us to fill it. The challenge for us is to dedicate ourselves, sacrifice ourselves, learn what it is that we must gain in terms of skill sets and development, and have faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us to the destiny that He has promised for His servants. ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة مقيمة بالنوم ربنا أفرك علينا الصبر وحلا ربنا ونسن وعلى قلم يوم كافرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ حديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الله Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ar rasulullah kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear believers, once again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In conclusion, it is important for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Quran, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, as-sabru, wa sabiru, wa rabitu, O you who believe, persevere in patience and constancy within adversity, and by in such perseverance and patience, Rabitu, be ever ready to do what is right, to strengthen each other, to be able to garrison each other and support each other in the face of adversity. And to remain conscious of Allah, to have taqwa, a taqwa, to remember Allah, to have remembrance and regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you will be successful, tuflihun, that you will have not just the kind of success that is measured by your bank account, but the kind of success that is measured by how human you are. The kind of success that is measured by the flourishing life that is associated with having a human society. When we call people hayya ala salat, hayya ala falat, what are we calling them to? We're not just calling them to success. We're calling them to this type of society that is flourishing, that is thriving. Not just materially, but it is thriving spiritually. It is thriving intellectually. It is thriving emotionally. It is thriving in every dimension that the human being needs in order to be fulfilled in their life. and to give hope to people that are desperate. And when people have lost hope, they crawl into the crying corner and they explode out of the crazy corner. <laughs> people who are desperate and people who are despondent and in despair, that's the kind of people you see in Las Vegas going into a fine hotel renting out a suite, and then crawling into the corner, and then coming out with all kinds of weapons that kill 50-some people. Because why? Because they are in despair. And they have given up hope, not only in themselves, but they've given up hope in everything. So Allah says, Rabitu, to garrison each other 
We must understand that yes, as as Rabbi Elijah Muhammad said, we are in the wilderness of North America. Rabbi too is a place that is garrison. That means that you're in the wilderness and that you need to bring yourself together because there are wild animals outside of your sphere, meaning that you must protect each other. When Rabita was here in New York, and they understood that they were establishing a fort in North America that was going to be a safe haven for the propagation of Al-Islam. And every masjid has to be their rabita. Every masjid has to be a place where the Muslims are garrisoned and they're lifted up and they're protected and their mission, their mission is to go out into the world and transform the world from a wild place into a peaceful place. Being Muslim is not just saying assalamu alaikum. Being Muslim is saying assalamu alaikum, meaning that you are going to not only give the peace, but you're going to establish and maintain the peace. Praise be to Allah. So Allah says, Sabr, endure, be consistent. One of the things that the Muhammad, the Prophet sallam, said that what, what pleases Allah most is the consistent act of worship. Consistency and be connected to be connected and be bonded with each other. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our bonds, to prepare us and protect us from attacks, and to guide us in our efforts to find ways of relieving ourselves of difficulty. It is not only important to know what has happened, it is important to know why things have happened in our life to respond in a way that prevents those things from happening again. If our society is threatened, then we must understand what it is that's threatening our society, and we must build the necessary mechanisms to protect the Muslim community, particularly our wives and our children. Our global life urges us to get back to what appeals to the natural man and his spirit, and to follow those aimed toward a more excellent society toward a bigger and greater establishment of what our expressions are within that society, and toward a bigger and greater achievement that ultimately transforms and reforms the world locally, nationally, and internationally. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٍ لَسَنَةٌ لِمَا كَانَ يَرَجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, there is for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern or excellent model for him who places his hopes in the future, who places his hopes in that which is Allah in the future day and remembers Allah much. It is not enough to just look at our immediate circumstances. Look at the destiny. Look at the future and have hope that with Allah's help, we will reach the destiny that Allah intends for each and every one of his servants. The new day is dawning. Do not despair. Hold to the lifeline of the Quran. Hold to the lifeline of the Uswa and the Sunnah of Muhammad. And the promise of Allah's human life will be brighter. And Allah's life associated with this Muslim community will be one that will raise the dead and bring about not only Beauty and bounty for the Muslim community. It'll bring out beauty, bounty, and excellence for the human society in which we live. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, have mercy upon us. This ends my speech. May Allah forgive me and may He forgive you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ikam as Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.